Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So here we have a commercial RF amplifier palette I recently purchased from a fellow ham here in the UK. Now I believe this is rated at around 250 watts with just a 100 milliwatt input. However, this pallet will need some modifications performed to it and mounted onto a large heatsink before it can be used on the 70 centimeter handband as I plan to do. It will also require a pretty hefty low pass filter mounted onto the output before it goes off to the antenna. And well, this is what we're going to build in today's video. If you're interested in seeing the amplifiers build, then make sure to be subscribed so you do not miss those videos when they're published. Also, let me know in the comments if that is actually something that you'd be interested in seeing. So in the past, I've made some rather small low pass filters for the 70 centimeter band. Now these are great for receive and probably okay for a small amount of power, but nothing like what the RF palette amplifier that I showed you here is capable of. Now a friend of mine, Mike G0MJW, sent me some plans on how to build a high power 70 centimeter band low pass filter. Now these plans are actually based on the W6 PQL design that you can also find online. Now low pass filters normally use capacitors and air coil inductors, and that's the same for this design. However, the capacitors with this design actually uses the PCB. Three rectangles cut out in a specific size onto some PTFE double-sided PCB board. Now for the life of me, I could not find anywhere to purchase this type of PCB with this type of material. Now the whole filter board size is only 100 mm by 50 mm, but still I could not find anywhere to buy some online. Now luckily Mike G0MJW come to the rescue again and sent me an exact cut off of 100 by 50 mm of this PTFE board material. Now the way in which I plan to make these cutouts in the board is rather cool and something I've never done before, but more on that in a moment. Now these are some samples that I made just using some cheap single sided copper board just so that I could get the design right. Sometimes not all the copper was removed and sometimes it was slightly the wrong size, but after trial and error I ended up with a design which actually worked. So how did I achieve this? Well, I use one of these. Now this is the Makira Carvera Air. It's an automatic CNC machine. Now it is fairly new to the market and has to be one of the best priced desktop CNC machines that I've seen. Now I'm not a CNC expert by any means and cutting PCB tracks is not the only thing that this thing can do. It can mill aluminium, wood, plastics and all types of materials. You can also get attachments like a laser attachment for etching and also a 4D axis spindle. Now I do actually have all of these options, but I'll be using them in future projects. So not all in one video. Now as standard, it comes with this little laser probe, which is used to auto level the bed. Now that takes away any manual leveling before any job. You also get this rather funky emergency stop button if the unthinkable happens. You also get a starter pack of bits and tools, and there's plenty of options to choose from, including full PCB manufacturing, which includes solder mask and actually that etching on the board. Okay, so let's start building this high power 70 centimeter low pass filter. So first I'm gonna make sure the bed is clean. In fact, this little piece of wood attached to the bed, that's called wasteboard. This is so that if any bits manage to drill through the material that you're milling out or drilling, then it protects the bed itself. It also protects your bits because this bed is actually made of hard metal. Now after cleaning, I then place that 100 mil by 50 mil PTFE board into place. Now you get this lower left corner bracket, which makes the PCB snugly fit up to it. You also get these little clamps, which should be placed on each edge of the PCB just to make sure that it stays still. Now, if your PCB is slightly warped, then you can place these on top of the board on the edges, just make sure they're not be in the way of any drill bits as they come down. Now you can also use some double-sided tape 
just to help keep that board level on the waste board. Now with my design already converted to G-code and sent to the CNC machine's internal memory, I can actually use my iPad over Wi-Fi to call up that design and then start the job. So the first thing it will ask you to do is insert the leveling laser probe. Changing bits or inserting this probe is actually super easy. You just pull down this lever and then slide the probe or bit into place, then just release that handle upwards just to make sure that it's a secure fit. Now, when I press confirm on the app, the Carvera Air will now probe the board using that laser probe that we just inserted. Now, this will store the level of the board at certain points, and you can actually increase or decrease the amount of leveling points on the Carvera controller software before starting the job. Now, once that is complete, I'll now change that leveling probe out to the first bit that we need to do the job. Now, this first bit will be used to cut the tracks on the PCB. Now, for this, I'm using a 0.2 millimeter, 30 degree metal engraving bit. Now, we will use a different bit when it comes to drilling the holes for the end type connectors. Now, I actually find this part quite mesmerizing and really satisfying to watch, maybe because it's new to me and I haven't really done this before. Now you will see a couple of pipes coming out of the front of that spinning bit there. And the large one, well, that's for suction. And if you had a vacuum attached to the rear port, any material that's kind of flung around from the bit as it's milling it out would get sucked up. Now there's also a little skirt that you can put on, but you would not be able to see what's going on. So I left it off for filming. The other little pipe to the right of this is for blowing air onto the bit. Now this will either cool down the bit when you're milling metal or it will blow away any particles generated from the cuts. Now in this video, I'm just using a handheld vacuum, which also has a blow feature. Now I really do need to get a cheap air compressor or pump for this. So if you've got any recommendations, let us know down in the comments. Now this process can actually take a little time and that's depending on the speed and how much there is to mill away. Once the three rectangles, which make the capacitors, have been cut, it's now time to change the bit. This time I'll fit a corn bit, which will make the holes for the end type connectors. So that's going to be 10 holes in total. Now making sure that the depth of these holes is not too deep is actually quite important, as you really do not want to drill too much into that wasteboard if you can help it. But I guess it's better to drill into that wasteboard than the metal bed. That's for sure. Now, I think I set the drill depth to around two millimeters for these holes, whereas the tracks for the capacitors were set to around 0.1 millimeters deep. Now, the board itself is actually around 1.5, 1.6 millimeters thick, just in case you was wondering. Now, you will also see a lot more material building up on top, and that's because we're actually cutting the actual PCB itself to make those holes. So using a blower is essential here if you want to see what's actually going on. With the board now finished, it's time to remove it. And it's simple as just undoing those supporting clamps that we attached earlier. So back up in the shack, now it's time to inspect the board more closely. And yet, yeah, I am extremely happy with this and how it turned out. All of the edges appear to be perfect. The depth of the tracks are quite decent and the holes for the end types appear to be spot on. Temporary fitting one of those end type sockets shows that the drawing was actually spot on. So now it's time to start building the filter board itself. So first I'll attach these end type sockets like this using bolts and nuts to secure them into place. Now you can see here that the center pin comes through the PCB with the white insulation still intact. Now to ensure a perfect ground connection between the PCB and the nuts on the end type, I decided to solder them. However, after a few seconds of attempting to solder these nuts, I realized that it just wasn't going to happen. Now what I should have been fitting here is actually brass nuts, a bit like this. Now these solder extremely easy, especially with my soldering iron set to 50 million degrees Celsius. Well, not 50 million, more like 450. Now it was time to make the coil air inductors, According to the specification sheet that we looked at earlier, I needed a 4.1 millimeter former. 
and luck be have it, one of my tool bits was the perfect diameter of 4.1 millimeters. Now using 1.2 millimeter copper wire, I made the first of the four inductors. Now there are two that require two turns and two that require four turns. The first one, L1, I turned clockwise around the former and then just used some pliers to make the little legs so I could solder them onto the PCB and centre pin easily. So this is how the first one looked once soldering into place. I then made the other two turn coil using the same copper wire and same 4.1 millimeter former, but this time coiling it anti-clockwise. This second two turn coil gets soldered onto the other end of the PCB between the PCB and the centre pin of that other end type socket. Now next it was time to make the first of two four turn coils. Again, using the same 4.1 millimeter former and this time coiling it clockwise. Now I also made the last four turn coil, turning it anti-clockwise this time. Holding the coil near the PCB between the pads helped me realize where I needed to snip those little legs coming from the coils. Now I definitely used way too much copper wire when I was turning it, but I guess it's better to have too much than realize you do not have enough in the middle of winding. So now it's time to solder these last two coils to the board between those capacitors. Now the copper wire gets very hot all the way through very quickly. Copper is an extremely good conductor. So using a pair of tweezers to hold the coil while soldering is advisable. Unless of course you're like my missus and have asbestos fingers and do not feel the heat. And there we go, one high power 70 centimeter low pass filter. And I believe Mike, G0MJW, has tested one of these up to around 400 watts without any sparks or fires. So it's definitely going to be okay for the 100 watts that I plan to use from the amplifier palette that I showed you earlier. So now it's time to test the filter to see if all of this preparation and work has paid off. And also to find out if this will be usable for my high powered UHF amplifier that I plan to build very soon. So to test this, to make sure it's doing what it's supposed to, we connect it between the two ports on my VNA. And well, here's the results. So what we're looking at here is two different readings. The top one is return loss in dB and the bottom one is gain. Now both of these charts are showing a frequency span of between 400 megahertz and 1.3 gigahertz. Now the whole purpose of a low pass filter is to only allow frequencies below a certain frequency through, hence low pass only. The bottom chart shows that it's good up to around 538 megahertz. As the frequency creeps up, the signal is kind of attenuated. Now this is exactly what we want. Amplifiers and transmitters can sometimes generate unwanted harmonics on multiples of the fundamental frequency. Using something like this will weaken those harmonic signals which in turn should not annoy any other services that are using those frequencies on the harmonics. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed that video. I actually really enjoyed making this and I'm really looking forward to building my palette amplifier. And now I will record it and document every step that I make. So like I said earlier, if you're interested, make sure to be subscribed. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Massive thank you to my YouTube members, my patrons, and of course, all my subscribers and you guys that watch my videos is very much appreciated. Anyway, enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video.